Okay, everyone, here we go, back with Everlasting Summer. Anyways, let's go. Shall we go? I forgot m my name for this, too. Slavia. 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 Yes, Slavia. Standing beside me, dressed in a pioneer uniform game. Dressed in a pioneer uniform. Let's go. I've been here for a very short time, but all the people I've met, she looks the least she looks the least suspicious. However, this fact is already suspicious itself. We walked over to the square. The USSR girl and the girl who hit me on the back were there chasing each other. <laughs> Was that supposed to be the USSR? Is that some kind of game they're playing? Yuliana, enough running. I'll tell everything to Oga Demerit. I wonder how I pronounced these names back whenever I started this game. Aye aye, Captain. I don't I don't remember voices either, so decided not to question Salavia for a while about what was going on on or, or the local residents. Better meet with this mysterious Oga or Olaga. Olige Dim Trivena first. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so it's like she's the boss here. Or the camp, like, kind of leader. We walked past the rows of almost identical cabins, some of which looked like fat bear beer barrels, while others looked more like household sheds. Finally, Slavia stopped in front of the smallish one-story cabin. Oh. Looks like an artist building, a faded paint clipping here, and they're with age. God, son of a... Sparkling the sun, the window shutters slightly ajar, were swaying almost unnoticeably in the wind, and the huge elic bushes were growing at the sides. Seems as if this ramshackle... Hut was drowning in a storm of puddle silk and a light and, and like la 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 like some elemental force or in uh, an extraordinary destroying the troops leader's house. What are you standing around for? Let's go. Let let's go. Let's go. Fuck. So Lavia snapped me out of my daydreaming. And stop teasing Lena already. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Lena? Sounds like there's someone inside. Indeed. A moment later, the door swung open and Yuliana ran out and dashed past with the same mischievous grin. Pigtailed girl came out next. Don't let don't let it bother you, Lena. So her name is Lena. Gotta be thankful it's not Rena at least. But I don't. Instead of fin finishing the sentence, she blushed and quickly headed toward the square. For some reason, she felt like turning. For, for some reason, I felt like turning and following her with my eyes. But Slavia said, "Come." We entered the cabin. Inside it looked something similar to what I'd imagine two beds, a table, a couple of chairs, a similar carpet on the floor, a wardrobe. Nothing special, but at the same time it felt home-like and cozy. Though this room was almost in the same state of dis disorder as my own flat. The girl standing near the window appeared to be about 25 years old. Natural had obviously gifted Nature had always gifted with her with a pretty face and a good body. At least one thing can help you have, can, can keep you happy in this pandemonium. The locals are beautiful. I can't speak. You're finally here. Excellent. My name is uh, whatever the hell that my name is. I'm the camp leader. Nice to meet you. I'm Sim Simeon. 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 I decided to talk as if I wasn't surprised by anything that was going on. She came closer. We 
I've been expecting you since early morning. You've been expecting me? Yes, of course. And when does the next bus come, Kalai? And why do you need it? Yeah, right. Why would I need it? Because I should ask direct questions. People here may, re may react to them quite unlike how I'd prefer. And I doubt I'd get an get any answer. No reason, just curious. By the way, where are we exactly? Our mailing address, I mean. I wanted to send a letter to my parents and tell them I got here for For some reason, I had the desperate idea that I'd, that I'd play along and I would find something out. Oh, but your parents called just half an hour ago, sent their regards to you. Now that's a surprise. So can I call them because I forgot to tell them something before I left? No. <laughs> she gave me a sweet, spontaneous smile. What? Why not? I don't understand what's going on here either. We don't have a phone here. Then how could my parents make a call to here? I've just come back from the district central central tower. I talked to, with them there. Ah, so that's how it is. And can I somehow get to the town? No. She kept the same smile. Why not? Because the next bus only comes in a week. Decided not to inquire how the troop leader managed to get there and back. I would get no answer anyways. This is very fishy. All this time, Savannah was standing next to me and seemed to find nothing odd in our conversation. Oh, we need to find a new uniform for you. Got absolutely no desire to put on a pioneer shorts or wear a ridiculous red navy handkerchief. However, wearing the winter clothes in summer isn't a great idea either. Right, thank you. I wonder if I'm the only one here who finds it strange that some, someone's wearing a coat and winter boots in <laughs> such heat. Righto. I'd be off then, and you can get yourself acquainted with the camp. Don't forget to come to dinner in the evening. Having said that, she walked out of the cabin. No, walked isn't the right word. She rushed out. I ended up alone with Salavia. You must go too things to do. Take a walk, look around the camp a bit. See you in, a, in the evening. If there is no threat or catch to this, then it's really is embodied by its love. You become more and more appealing. For the first time today, I realized that it was awful. What? For the first time today, I realized that it was Awfully not hot. It was awfully hot here. Although obviously my winter clothes were to blame for that. Took off my coat and dropped it into the bed. Just dropped it into the, what's her face's bed. Okay. My pullovers followed it. I was now wearing only the shirt. That's much better. All I could do now was follow their advice and go around the camp. Try to find something out in the meantime. Passing the local residential district, I saw a pioneer guy coming my way. Okay, so there are guys here. And it was really, and it was really a pioneer guy, not a pioneer girl. Apparently there were men, <laughs> even in this kingdom of Amazonians. I'm Amazons. Hello, you're new here. You must be Simeon, right? And how do you? Everyone knows already, I'm Electric. Electronic. By the way, the real one, you can call me that. Electronic. Electronic was a robot character appearing in popular Soviet films and book series. He looked like an exact copy of this skull kid called Sargi Cheese Cock. Electronic, the real run that things were going from crazy to completely insane. Alright. Yuliana also calls me Cheese. Ch Chessy. On toast with mushrooms. Because my last name is Cheese. Cheese Knock. Che cheese Cock. Cheese Cock. I see. Let me show you around. Accepted his offer as it would have taken much longer to get to know this place alone. Fine, let's go. 
we ended up at the square again. As if this place was all there is to this camp. Lena was sitting on one of the benches reading some book. Electronic Covenant confidently approached her. Son of a bitch. Hello, Lena. Meet the new guy, Simeon. She started she started briskly. Hello. Well, I can say we've already met in a way. Yes, yes, yes. She looked away from the book for a moment, glanced at me, blushed, and went back to reading as if nothing as if not noticing that there were still that we were still here. Let me give this guy a fucking voice, because I could probably do that. Alright, let's go. Damn, this is weird. Alright, let's go. Let's go on. It was... It was... Uh, it was... I was at first surprised at meeting this girl was reduced to a couple of words, but then I thought that it was much better that way. Electronics vigorous activity did not fit well with Lena's shyness. Let's go. Next, we came to a building which I instantly identified as a canteen. And this here, I know this is where you consume organic food. Yeah, something like that. Oh, in the canteen's porch stood the unfriendly girl who hit me on the back of here. Oh, on the canteen's porch stood the unfriendly girl that. Okay, yeah. The sight of her, my joking mood vanished in a blink of an eye. <laughs> really? Now is not the best time to be pulling a guy's leg, even though he's quite hilarious. First, I need to figure out what, what what's what here. Or at least, where am I? Where I am. Her over there, that's Alicia. Be careful around her. <laughs> Can't say that. Won't even begin to try to say that. Spoken a whisper. Oh. Diva means two in Russian. The whole nickname sounds exactly like Two Chi in Russian, a reference to the late Two Chi dot Ru ominously image board. Ominous image board. That that sounds pretty cool. Don't even risk calling her Diva Che. She doesn't like that. What did you say? What did you call me? She must have heard him. In the blink of an eye, Alicia jumped down from the porch and dashed towards us. Alright, you'll, <laughs> you'll manage from here onwards. <laughs> they tried to took his heels. Took to his heels and took off. Shit. Can I save? There you go. Okay, I could run after him or I can do nothing. I'd feel like if I do nothing, she'd end up hitting me. Fuck it. Lisa run past, stopped for a moment, and growled. I'll deal with you later. Deal with me? What did I do wrong? I added a forced grin, smile to my words. But what am I guilty of? She made no reply and carried on chasing electronic. I think that's the thing. I, mean, I might say some of these names wrong. Looks like I'll have to kill time alone, waiting for dinner. Decided to go east, at least in the direction where east would be in my world. Soon after, I found myself near a football pitch. Game was in full swing there. I guess watching it for a bit wouldn't do any harm. In my childhood, my teen years, I was not a bad player myself. Even though I'm going professional and a few injuries in a row killed my desire to risk my health for the sake of uncertain chance in the game. Kids of different ages were running around the pitch. I can see a boy around about 10 and a girl around about 14 years old. A girl? A girl. Hey, that's Yolania. Alright, so she plays football so surprising. She seems a restless one after all. I was standing quite far from the pitch, but she still noticed me. Noticed me. Hey you! 
Yelana. Yelana? Yelana. That's it. Yelana shouted. Wanna play? I didn't know how to answer. On the on one hand, running around for 10 minutes is no big deal. On the other hand, any wrong move in my situation could be my final one. But in any case, my attire wasn't suitable for this weather. If I played in winter boots and warm jeans, I would sweat like a pig. Playing barefoot without jeans would be simply unethical. Maybe another time, alright? Shouted in response, turned around and walked back. I was followed by Yolanda's screams about my pants. Or about me being a pansy or something like that. <laughs> On a side note, I used to play um, soccer or football. I did it for about like five years and realized I'm not athletic and stopped doing it because I suck at soccer or football. <laughs> Evening was falling, making me feel tired and em empty. Empty. Can't even read simple words. After a day washed with no real purpose. Oh shit. <laughs> came back to the square, sat down on the bed, and gave an, an exhausted sigh. I better sit here and wait for dinner. After all, it's easier to search for answers when you're not hungry. They do give food to the people here, right? You know, it's curious how the simplest human's need, needs can break the will to ponder on things, to strive for something. For example, I feel hungry now, so I care much less about where I am or what is happening to me. Could great people also be affected by this? And in that case, how did Spartacus feel? How did Spartacus start the slave uprising in ancient times? I can only conclude that I am not a great person, and it does not really matter which, men, which mechanism I serve as gear and society the my tricks or a weird pioneer camp my thoughts were interrupted by the sound of bells chiming from a loudspeaker on the light post on the light post it must be the dinner call i headed toward the canteen it was a good time that now i knew where it was that's good uh she was there standing on the porch I stopped and looked closely at her as if I were expecting something. She looked back at me for a while, but at last she came closer. Simon, what are you waiting for? Come in already. Guess nothing bad can happen if I go in if I go with her. My stomach backed me up here. Hold up, I need to close my door. I'm gonna do that real quick. Because you, you can probably hear my brother screaming, which is not good. The two of us went inside. The canteen looked like a canteen. <laughs> That's quite entertaining. Canteen looked like a canteen. I had a chance to visit a factory canteen. Canteen. Am I saying it right? Because it might be, because it, this is like pretty much a fact, like not a factory, um, a cafeteria kind of. So I might be seeing it wrong because I'm saying it as if like I had like a canteen where you put drinks in and shit. Well, technically, I guess you can put drinks in a cafeteria too. Like a flask is what I'm thinking of whenever I say that word. So it might be the same, but it might be the same pronunciation, but it might not. So I don't know. This one was exactly the same, just made a bit cleaner and more modern. Metal chairs and tables, glazed tiles on the wall and on the floor. Unsophisticated tableware with the occasional crack. Guess that's what a canteen in a pioneer camp is supposed to look like. Simon, wait a moment. We'll find you a place to sit. She looked around the place. Davashkiezvakienya. I'm so sorry. Hold it right there. <laughs> Shouted out Elisa, who was passing by. What? 
What's up with your clothes? Anything wrong with them? Indeed, your attire looks somewhat pro provocative. Can't even say that word. I'm a fucking idiot. Get your uniform nice and neat right now. All right, all right. Lisa got her shirt right and walked past. She didn't get a pleasant glare at me. So, where can we find you a place to sit? There weren't a lot of free seats. Go over there next to Yulania. Uh, maybe I... Yeah, it's fine. Food's already on the table, too. No choice. No other choice but to accept. Of course, there was a pro probability that the um, cutlass poisoned with curar. The mashed potatoes generously seasoned with arsenic and the glass filled with excellent antifreeze instead of compote. In common Russian language, kotleta, cut, uh, cutlet, is mimicked meats fried or baked in the shape of a ball or cylinder close to America parties. Kompot is a drink made by boiling fresh or dried fruit in a large amount of water. Compet in French. Compote. Compote in French. That's pretty cool. I, I like how this game like tells you stuff about Russia to you as you play it along. Like play along with it. It's pretty cool. But it all looks so tasty that I had no chance to resist. Hey. Hey. Uh, what do you want? I replied rather rudely. <laughs> Who is sitting next to me? Why didn't you play football with us? Because of my clothes. Said I pointed at the source of the problems. Oh, all right then. Eat. However, there wasn't much left to eat. My cutlass was missing from my plates. Only she could have done it. No more precisely none, but Yervena could have done it. No, more precisely Yervena. Give me back my cutlet. The big family, you snooze, you lose. Can't cost you. Uh, it can cost you a cutlet if you are careless. Give it back, I'm telling you. Attempt to take the cutlet. Don't attempt to get, take the cutlet. You know what? That's my food. You and what? Okay. I'm not on the internet. Don't call me a bitch, you bitch. <laughs> Tempt to take the cutlet. You know what? I mean, it'd be out of place for me just to fucking like harass a little girl for a piece of meat. I don't. I don't like the idea of that. So let's not do that. <sighs> See, I don't have it. And indeed. Yelana's plate was empty. It seemed that this little girl eats as fast as she steals someone's cutlass. <laughs> Take it easy. We'll work something out now. She grabbed my plate and ran off. Oh shit. <laughs> there was no point in following if they wanted to poison me here. They could have done it in a much easier way. <laughs> she fucking just straight took my plate. About a minute later, Yelana returned and handed me a plate with... Steaming hot cutlet on it. Oh. oh, that's nice. Here's one from the star ring. Here's one for the star ring. Thanks. It was all I could say. I was so hungry that my suspicions were gone in a flash. I picked up the cutlet with my fork in. Oh no! Some bug! Not a bug! An insect. It's got legs and it wiggles. Oh, plate fell to the floor and broke the piece of the chair that you heard with my legs while falling. I've disliked insects since I was a child, but when these <laughs> creepy crawlies appear in my plate, that's just way too much. Little. No, I seem ready to for such twist and was already at the door laughing as she <laughs> handed. As she had just heard a fresh stand-up comedy joke 
Okay, I was ready to like dismiss everything about her and be like, hey, she's pretty nice, but she just done fucked with us. <laughs> we dashed after her. We ran out of the canteen. We were just a few dozen meters apart, and I fell. <laughs> I felt like the catch this little girl recently. We ran through the square, past the club's house, and ran into the forest path. I started to gasp my breath. Should have quit smoking, I guess. Probably should have. Yolana passed out of sight on the next turn. It can't it can't be true that she managed to get away from me? <laughs> Simply can't. I stopped and tried to catch my breath again. I'm lost, aren't I? Night was falling. Oh shit, an Eastern night. Look like I'm lost. Yep. It's a bad idea to stay in the woods at night. Better get to the camp. However, I had absolutely no clue which way to go. We gotta choose a, choose at random. It's gonna be my choice, huh? I wonder for quite some time in the forest, even though, and even through, uh, even thought of crying for help, but finally I saw the camp's fence above the trees. Everything fell back into place. The bus is gone. I mumbled quickly. On the other hand, there was nothing strange about that. The bus couldn't have just stayed there forever. On the other hand, Meant that there was someone driving, because buses do not drive themselves, or do they? This road seemed too normal, but every event here had at least two explanations for it. An ordinary, real, everyday explanation, and a surreal one. Certainly, the driver could have just been off for a snack, and I left too soon. And that's why, in any case, this is not a place for me. Oh shit. Okay. Whether that bus drives itself or not was probably an important question, but it was much more important to know how I had got here at all. And where is where this here was, the fields and the woods stretching towards the horizon, and no answer. There was nothing familiar about them. A strange, odd, and alien world. However... At the same time, it was absolutely not frightening. Either my self-preservation instinct decided to re-resign from its job, or all this running around the cape, camp and the local pioneers had lulled me into lulled me so much with their carefree normality that I was simply forgetting that I had happened to be to me just a couple of hours ago. But I, f I fucking can't read. Although I probably just had no strength left to worry. All I wanted was some peace, calmness. Wanted to just have a break from it all. And only after that would I continue looking for answers. Ready and reloaded. However, that would be some time later. And what about now? Can I allow myself to relax? Nope, it's nighttime. It got completely dark, and in any case, it was better to spend the night in the camp. I was about to head back when someone came up silently from behind. Hello, what are you doing here so late? It was Sol Slavina. I said her name earlier. Slavia. 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 <sighs> Standing before me. I was so surprised that I jumped. So, you didn't catch Yolanda, did you? She smiled. I know she's supporting me inside. No wonder. No one ever has. Yeah, she's a real rocky girl. She could have found a better use for her energy than looking for adventures. You must be hungry. You didn't manage to have any dinner at all. Indeed, I had completely forgotten about my hunger, but after these words of hers... My stomach grew attention to itself by giving a rumbulous rumble. You Slavia smiled. Let's go then. What, is the canteen still open? It's alright. I have the keys. The keys? Yes. I have keys to all the facilities to this camp. How come? Well, I'm something like the camp leader's aide here. I see. Well, let's go. It was an offer you can't refuse. You couldn't refuse, I guess. When we reached the square, Salavia stopped in her tracks. Excuse me. 
Should warn my roommate that I'll be late. She's so punctual. Her She's so punctual herself that she won't. She'll she'll be worried otherwise. Punk, too old. You go on to the canteen, and I'll come in a minute. All right. Hold up. I need to fix my my thing. All right. I really did not expect to find some somebody aside from myself there at such an, a late hour. I'm stuttering now. And that somebody was apparently trying hopelessly to open the door. Without any secrets, though, I walked up onto the porch. A lock picker turned out to be Alicia. I should have probably kept off and waited. She looked at me intently for a while, then said, Don't just stand there. Give me a hand or something. Meaning, help me open the door. Why? Because I want some buns in Kelfrey. Dinner wasn't big enough. Um, is that really a good idea? Are you hungry yourself, huh? Joanna didn't let you have a normal dinner, did she? <laughs> she smiled sarcastically. <laughs> True, she didn't. It's fine. She only will come now. And what? Guess I shouldn't have said that. I'm off then. And you'll pay for this. You owe you owe me two already. Jesus Christ. Having said that, at least you disappeared into the night. <laughs> and what was the first one? <laughs> I don't even remember. It's been a while since I played this game again. Selenia didn't keep me waiting for too long. Is everything alright? Yeah. Why are you asking? No reason. It's nothing. I would be better if, if I didn't tell her about Alicia. It would be better if I didn't tell her about Alicia. Everything's fine. I said that and immediately heard a noise of dishonesty in my voice. Well, shall we go? As for Zelania. She seemed not to have noticed anything, or at least she was pretending she hadn't. We entered the canteen. Wait a bit, I'll go get something. I sat down on a chair and obediently waited for my savior. My dinner was simple, a few buns and a glass of carefree. Kerfir. Kerfir. I wonder, but Hungry Pioneers finished everything off. However, even that, even that was far better than most of my usual diet. Sian Lia sat across the table and looked at me while I was eating. Is there something on, on my face? No, just... She smiled. So how did you like your first day at the camp? Well, I don't really know. Silly to ask someone who suddenly found found himself in a different reality whenever he liked the food in the can uh, reality whether he liked the food in the canteen, the camp leader, or uh, assistant hunt hut. It's all right. You'll soon get used to it. Samia started stared at the window dreamily. Frankly speaking, I have no desire to get used to such things. But as for her, she doesn't know. Or at least, she wants me to think she doesn't know. Well, all in all, it's nice here. That's a small break of the awkward silence. Do you, st do you think so? She asked without any interest. Yes. This place is so... I want to say retro, but... I managed to hold on back. After all... It was retro for me, but what about them? It might be the only kind of life they knew. The term life was here at all. So how? She watched me closely, as if something important deepened, depended on my answer. Well, I don't know. Lovely. Yeah, it's lovely here. I guess you're right. She smiled again. It's very good that you think so. Why? Well, not everyone likes it here. What about you? Me? Yes. I love it here. It's great. Then you don't need to worry about what other people think? Well, I don't really worry. So, uh, Solani, S Solavia laughed. This conversation seemed to be leading me far astray from where I wanted to get to. 
You're worried yourself. Really? Why do you say so? Well, someone is chewing so intensely. I'm sorry. It's okay. I couldn't bring myself to be more cautious around this girl. Why? But why her in particular? Why not any other local inhabitant? Every one of them looked completely normal to me. Precisely normal, so normal it sends chills down my spine and into my marrow. Normal, normal like a neighbor with a power drill in one hand and a subwoofer in the other. Not like a passenger you can often meet in a subway or on public transportation. Not like a co-worker at the next table in an open plan, or plan office. And not even like a friend who only differs from other humans. Is it? Is his consistence. Constant and since. Yeah. All of them looked as I would expect them to be with their own downs downsides, but without any superpowers. What is that supposed to be? All of them looked normal? Maybe that's intentionally let out. Silvia was also cute. She glanced at her stealth, stealth, illy, not knowing what to say. I glanced at her stealthily, not knowing what to say. I'm sorry. I wanted to show you, Cap. But was right off my feet. I didn't miss anything while you're while, while on my own. I guess. Are you sure you didn't miss anything at all? She smiled so brightly that I had to drop my eyes in confusion. Well, how would I know? It's my first day here. Okay. And what have you seen so far? I've seen the square, this canteen, the football field. What about the bench? Just from afar, you really should go there. Or let's do it together. Yeah, okay, we will. Your nature has started to scare me, but then I thought, what if everything that happens here is how I supposed to be, and this world looks strange only to me, while for them it is normal. Maybe I was thrown into the past. Yes, that would explain a lot. Can I ask a stupid question? No. Sally smiled and stood up from the table. It's late. Can you find the way to, to um, whatever the hell her name is by yourself? Of course I can. But what should I go there? She'll settle you with someone. What for? Probably this question seems stupid because Salami burst into good-natured laughter. You need to sleep somewhere, right? That makes sense. <laughs> yeah, you idiot. Fine, I'll be off then. Good night night. It's strange that she left in such a hurry. A bundle of keys and the door lock caught my attention. I was going to catch to Slavia, but where does she live? And knocking on every door during the middle of the night doesn't sound like a bright idea. Oh, fuck. I can take the keys and give them to her. But hold up. Take the keys. I'd better take them. I'll give them back tomorrow because who knows what happens here at night. Such thoughts gave me chills. It's me who needs to be careful here in the first place. The night through dark wasn't silent at all. One can hear chirping crickets, the songs of the night birds, and rustling trees from everywhere. A sudden desire to follow Salonga's advice and go to the camp leader's cabin appeared. I don't know why, but the sight of the unknown bronze builder of com communism put me in a constructive mood. I sat on the bench and started to recall everything that happened today. That was all my constructive mood could offer. Here was much brighter than near the canteen, and vivid 
and tardily pioneers were running by, so this place didn't seem scary at all. Bus. Okay. Anyways, what you missed? Bus. Bus. Summer camp. Girls. I was so tired from everything new and strange that I could not come up with a single explanation for what was going on. Put up my phone ring. I barely had noticed. Even I barely had noticed. I. I, I heard a barely noticeable rustling nearby. I ship. I shivered and looked at the direction. A girl reading a book. It was Lena. I decided to move closer to talk. She was the only new person I had met here without exchanging even a few words. Uh, sorry. What are you reading? Lena was so surprised that she even jumped. Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. Never mind. She blushed and stared at the book again. So what are you reading? On the cover was written, Gone, then the wand. Gone in the wind. Praise the book. See, I'm not good at picking things. <sighs> she... Praise the book, fuck it. Good book. Thanks. Honestly speaking, I haven't read it, but... I think that such literature suits her very well. And it didn't seem to be interesting in continue on our... Continuing the conversation. Well, if I'm bothering you... No. She answered while Lo still looking at the book. Can I sit beside you for a while? Why? And really, why? Maybe just because I was just tired and having company is better than being alone. Maybe I wanted to try some, try to find something out for me. Carefully examined Lena. But no, I doubt that. Well, I don't know. Am I allowed to? Feel free. If I'm bothering you. No, you're not. Hold up. Ah, oh, shit. Hold up. Let me just, um... Fix this. Fucking mute. I forgot how to do this. Notification just off for an hour. Okay, just yes. Cause that's a group chat, so I mean I don't need to know if anyone texts me from there. I mean, anyways, um, you can, I can leave, just say. Everything's alright. Okay, then. Sit on the end of the bench carefully. After such an intense talk, staying here was the last thing I wanted. But it wouldn't be nice to just stand up and leave. It didn't really go well, huh? You hadn't answered anything. Seems I made a fool out of myself. But if Yolanda was here, she'd have a good laugh at me. Do you enjoy being here? I recall Silvani's questions and thought it would be a good start for a conversation. Yes. She smiled slightly. I guess I like it too. Luna definitely isn't very sociable. Probably can't carry on a meaningless, a meaningless conversation as easily as Salavia. But there was something about her that attracted attention. Like a momentary glimpse glimpse of a reflection in the glass on a rainy autumn evening, which makes you turn around and stare into the darkness searching for something you saw out of the corner of your eye. Of course, you weren't able to discuss or understand what it was, but it still felt so tempting. Nina was still reading the book without paying any attention to my presence. I had no intention of asking for anything about this camp or, or this world in general. Beautiful night. Yes. How in the world would you start a conversation with her? It's late and I have to go. Yes, it's quite late. Good night. Night. There was something strange about this girl. At first glance, she was a typically shy and modest pioneer girl, but the mystery of Lena took its own place in a massive list of mysteries about this cap, which I had started to put together in my head. A lazy evening, there's nothing like a good time with nothing to do. Headed toward um, whatever a name's cabin. Alright, this is where we're going to end. Uh, hope you liked it. Let me save it. Okay, this is save, right? Shit.
Hello, Samyun. Let me just do that as if you. Okay, guys. Um, I hope you liked it. Uh, this seems to be a really long game because I'm barely on day one, and I've done like two videos on it already. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you liked it. Um, comment, rate, subscribe, do all that cool stuff, and um, I will see you in the next video. Peace.